right, good morning. So, my name is David Manuel. I work in the office, and uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays, and I really enjoy it. And it's part time here, and I've gotten to meet a, a bunch of you as well. But I just want to say I'm really, really thankful for this this opportunity, and really enjoy uh, getting to know each and every person here, and uh, and just want to say thank you. Um, I also am a full-time student at Talbot School of Theology and uh, pursuing a Master of Divinity in spiritual formation and soul care. And so I, I do that. That takes up a, a bunch of my time uh, outside of work. But I truly love this church from the moment um, my wife and I started attending and uh, love how much warmth that you've given me in the office and for all those people that I know you. So thank you for everyone and thanks for this opportunity. Um, so let us just uh, begin in prayer, even though we had a bunch of praying already. Let's just continue in some more prayer. Oh, God, we just, we thank you for this morning, that this is a blessed morning. It is something that you have uh, brought together and that we, we take comfort in that, knowing that you are the one that's guiding us and that uh, I just pray that every heart here Um, including myself, that we as a church would truly uh, meet and grasp and understand and be able to receive um, the vastness of your love for us. We thank you for this day, and I just pray that you would be with my words and uh, that you would help me be true and faithful and accurate in um, what you have to say. So we just praise you and thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so... uh, The moment I uh, graduated high school, I decided to join the Navy, and that uh, quickly took me to to Great Lakes where I went to boot camp and enjoyed, got through all of that, and then my training was actually in San Diego, so I was was kind of excited to come back to California, which is where I grew up, and and, uh, each weekend, the training was pretty rigorous, but each weekend I broke the liberty rule and uh, went and and enjoyed time with my family and friends. And as I was doing that over and each weekend, I, uh, I, I met a girl who happened to be the sister of my, my high school soccer coach. And so I had an in with the soccer coach, so I had an in with this girl. And, uh, and I, I really, we started, we just kind of hit it off right, right in, from the get-go. And it was, uh, but it was really only a, a relationship on the weekends because I was so, um, busy during the weekend training and it was uh so we would call though and you know get to know each other and text and and enjoy the time and eventually we we kind of we never it was never explicitly said but we kind of became an item you know like a boyfriend girlfriend we were a couple and it was it felt good i i was enjoying the time um with this with this girl and and uh and so her best friend was also in the military, and they were going to move to Texas. And her best friend decided uh, that it would be best for for them to get married. And so, because it was Jade's best friend, um, she invited me to be a plus one at the wedding. And so I, I thought that was really cool. And uh, and it was an official date, you know, that we got to dress up and and be marry at a wedding. And I, I thought it was a great time. So uh, we got to, you know, get to this wedding, and it was, everything was going well. I thought it was a wonderful time to meet her, have fun seeing her friends as well. And, uh, but about midway through, she was, she was a bridesmaid. And so about midway through, I, she just kind of disappeared. And I was still, you know, wanting to dance and have a good time by myself, even though I didn't know where she went. I tried calling, you know, her and texting her, but she, there was no response. And so I even asked the bride, um, hey, do you know where Jade is? And, and there was no, she didn't know. And she was like, well, I'll, I'll let you know. But it was a Saturday and I needed to get back to San Diego and by, you know, the evening and, and be able to report back to duty. So I, I was like, well, I really want to see her, but I, you know, if I can't, if I don't find her, please let her know that I wanted to let her know that, uh, before I left to say goodbye. And so that, that was good. And I, and I, and so I went, went back home, 
uh, to San Diego and, and kind of was confused, kept calling her. She didn't call back. Uh, throughout the week, I also started to call her, and, and there was just no, there was no response. And I, I just kind of felt like it was really confusing. And so by the end of that weekend, that, that whole week, at that weekend, she ended up calling me. And uh, she informed me, sort of confessed to me, that that wedding night, she had slept with one of the groomsmen. And so it was a big shocker in church. So, but uh, but, but it, it devastated me. It, it ruined me because I just thought that, you know, it was just, it had just been Christmas. And I had just gotten her a, a you know, a bracelet at this jewelry store. And the jeweler, or the, the salesman, decided, you know, to tell me, you, you should really, if this is girl is serious, you know, you should really start thinking about maybe a ring. And I, and I, that thought went through my head of thinking, maybe I should, you know. So it was a bad thought, but, you know, the, those, that was the seriousness of, of this relationship to me. And I was, and so to hear that it was, it was at this wedding that she invited me to, there was nothing more heartbreaking than to find that out. And, and I'm sure that there's so many uh, heartbreaking stories and relationships in this room that, that, have, that we've gone through, and it, and it never gets easier. It just ends up being more painful. And, uh, but it, it's right immediately, that, that, that feeling of, of hurt and pain and, uh, and heartache is right where I want you to kind of hold uh, this passage in Hosea. So let's get into the Word of God. It is uh, Hosea chapter 1, verses 2 through 11. If you guys would like to stand for reading of Scripture, thank you. So when the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go, marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblium, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call her Lo Ruhamah, which means not loved. For I will no longer show love to Israel, that I should ever at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to Judah, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or horse, by horses and horsemen, but I, the Lord their God, will save them. After she had weaned Lo Ruhamah, Gomer had another son. Then the Lord said, Call him Lo Ami, which means not my people. For you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called children of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will come together, and they will appoint one leader and will come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. You may be seated. So if you're thinking, what is going on? That's a pretty good start. So uh, <laughs> is, could it really be this passage that, Ho that the Lord tells Hosea, the, one of the, pro the Israel's prophets, to go and, and marry a prostitute is what it's saying. To go and marry someone who has a life, who, who's, who's uh, grown up to have a life of unfaithfulness, who, who has habituated a life that is, is, is continuing to go from person to person and never able to really stay and, and be faithful to any one person. That God says to go and marry a, a woman like this. Is that even possible? And I want to say and, and, you know, prompt everyone to think that it, it is what happened. Um, but even if it was just an image or an illustration that Hosea is painting, it still brings us to a grotesque image of, of 
marrying someone who no one would want to marry. Um, not only because uh, it's, it's something that was a sin in, in Israel, but it was also because um, you don't want to marry someone who's just going to break your heart. That, that, that they've, they've lived and grown up in hab habituating a, uh, a life of just going from one person to the next. And to, to, for Hosea to speak that, to, I mean, for God to speak that to Hosea um, must have been a very heavy burden for Hosea to start to go. But he goes and it says that he married Gomer, daughter of Diblium, and she conceived and bore him a son. So when she bore him, the Lord then said to Hosea, call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. So in this context here, we actually, Hosea came right about the middle of this uh, period in Israel where the kingdom of Israel was divided and that the ten tribes uh, of Israel were in the north and Benjamin and Judah were on the south. And, uh, and Benjamin and Judah, uh, is, is, he's trying to show that this is a divided kingdom and all of these kings that are reigning at this time are trying to take control of one another and that there's so much... Uh, bloodshed that's being caused by each king trying to take rule and who's uh, leading them and and at the at the heart of it that the that the north the northern kingdom of Israel was actually pursuing a a, a cow a, a, a false god a, a golden calf that was not God at all it was a uh, it was fantasy it was a it was a god that they didn't um, that wasn't real, and and that was the idolatry of the north, and and yet Jehu says that he has zeal for God, and that he ends up uh, obeying what God says that he's going to punish these these kings that are wicked and serving things that are going away from him, and so Jehu actually decides uh, to obey what God said, and he says that there's a zeal, but as soon as he finishes you know, what God had commanded him to do, he went right back into what they were, were entrapped with, was, which was worshiping this golden calf. So just, that was a little bit of Jehu. But what is, what is he saying to Hosea? Is that he's saying, I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. That Jehu is one of Israel's kings, and I will put an end to that. In that day, I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. So Hosea's second child was a daughter. And the Lord said to call her not loved. I mean, can you even imagine what it's like to really name your child not loved? That every single person in here knows how much love we have for children and for babies and for for new life it's it's love just pours out like uncontrollably and really for God to say to call to tell Jose to call his son or his daughter not loved is just is just devastating and it's for no for, and he tells us why for I will no longer show love to Israel that I should at all forgive them so we see just by the name what it really is to be a people of uh, before God. That that God's love is actually what what keeps us in with Him. That that God says that it's not loved or not following after or no mercy is meaning that before that God continued to give mercy and give love and holding. Um, this people of Israel, that it was actually God doing it and holding them. But they continued to go and, and follow other things and to, to never come back to God. And so God was saying, I'm eventually going to let you have what you want, that it's not me. And in that time, he's saying, this is why this child is going to be named Lo Ruhama, which means not loved, not following after no mercy. Yet I will show love to Judah, and I will save them. That's what he finishes after that daughter. But then, after she had weaned Loruhama, Gomer had another son, 
And the Lord said to him, call him lo ami, which means not my people. So we have Jezreel, which actually means God sows. And we have lo ruhama, which means not loved. And we have lo ami, which is not my people. So God sows not loved and not my people. These are the three kids Hosea has. And not my people, for you are not my people and I am not your God, is not... It sounds extremely harsh, and it, it, it's because it is. It's the truth. And that is what is amazing, to know that for you are not my people, and I, I am not your God, is that God is seeing their actual hearts, that, that they have never followed God. And, and God is saying that you have never been my people because you have never followed me. Um, and, and that is, it's a truth declaration. And he's also saying, this is not how it's going to end. This is not how I'm going to continue. That I'm just following you and you're continuing to leave. So he's saying to, to Hosea about Gomer, really is that you're marrying a, a woman who has already had a, a life of, of going to men, man to man to man to another person and And that's exactly how Israel is being, that God, even before he took Israel, that they were, they had already rebelled and had not followed after, and yet God continues to show that mercy. And, and this just comes to the point where he's saying that you really have gone so far that you have never been my people and I am not your God. But, so let's just go back and, and just kind of recap what the um what he's saying to to the first son is that he's saying Jezreel I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre um of at Jezreel and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel in that day I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel and so we see what what verse 5 is actually meaning is that Zechariah 9 says that rejoice greatly daughter Zion, shout, daughter Jerusalem, see, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey, I will take away the chariots of Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations, his rule will extend from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. So what what is he saying to Jezreel is, uh, is that he will break Israel's bow, that God will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel, and that he is the one uh, that is going to be, and we have, a, we have an introduction to what that is, that we know who was lowly and riding on a donkey, is Jesus. And he will, the battle bow will be broken, and he will proclaim peace to the nations. So we, we have this sort of uh, understanding of, of, of Israel at this moment in time and Jehu uh, being a, a rich imagery for just being killing and slaughtering. And so all of this is not how God wants his children to, to treat one another with, with, with uh, trying to be the best king and, and trying to be the only king and, and trying to kill one another. He, he doesn't like it. And so he says, I will proclaim peace. I will, I will break the bow. I will break the fighting and all of the chaos. And I will actually bring peace. And I will do that in Jesus Christ. And so the second uh, child, not loved, what does God say after that? He says, for I will no longer show love to Israel that I should ever forgive them. Yet I will show love to Judah and I will save them, not by bow, sword or battle, or by horses or horsemen, but I, the Lord, their God. So what is he saying that he's going to save them by? It's not by military victory. It's not by sword and and this... um, fighting of what Israel had had ended up becoming in this kingdom no he said it's not by boat it's by the Lord their God the Lord will save them so we just get a a picture of also in in Zechariah to know that uh, he says in Zechariah 4 that this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel that not by might nor by power but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty, that when he says in, to, to not loved, he says that I, will, I, will, I won't save you, 
but I will save Judah, and I will save them not by bo- so, uh, sword or, or bow, but I will save them as my, from myself. Um, so I, the Lord, their God, will save them. So it's from God that, is, that he, we are loved, and it's by God that he saves, and it's also through God that he saves. So we get to the third child, and we also see what he has to say on, um, on the second part, is, is that, he, he, that, we, that Lo Ruhamah is the, the third son, the third child, the second son, and he says, you are not my pe- that, that he's, his name is not my people, for you are not my people and I am not your God. But what does he say immediately following after that, is that the Israelites, yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted, which is just the perfect uh, promise that he, the, the promise that he gave to Abraham that he has not forgotten. That he's saying that this is not uh, just another. That is not going to be uh, exactly how you pictured it was going to be. But I will keep my promise to Abraham. So he's only doing this now by saying to those who are not my people that they will now become my people. And so Paul in Romans uh, actually interprets this exactly for us. That it, he sa- Paul tells us exactly what it, it means, what Hosea is saying here. He says that there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile. That it is not as though God's word had failed Israel. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. In other words, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. It does not, therefore, depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. What if he did this to make the riches of, this is Paul speaking, what if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy? whom he prepared in advance for glory, that truly God calls on all to believe, Jews and Gentiles. That is what he is saying in this passage, that he is saying that that no longer will I continue to have this relationship with Israel that continues to, to leave me and break my heart. I will open up to all who will believe, to all... Um, who are children of promise, that the people who are not my people, I will call them my children. So, this is also about you and I, that Jews and Gentiles means that it's for right now, that this is about you and I, and and we must ask how. It is only by faith that he, that God says that I will bring the divided kingdom in verse 11 together again and they will have one leader and one king and we know that that is Jesus Christ that he is the true person who brought the true king the true leader who brought peace to the nations and that he is is bringing all of Israel who's divided between Judah and Israel and all the world all his children he loves and he wants them to be united So if we could just recap one more time, is just knowing that Hosea, that God told Hosea to to marry this prostitute Gomer. And it was to show what an illustration that God, of who Israel was to God, that God was constantly loving Israel and just constantly being heartbroken. And as Israel continued to leave and continued to to go and, and follow other fake gods and also other gods that came in, such as Baal, all of it was just, uh, was just heartbreaking for God to see a, a person leave over and over again. And we also see that they have children who never believe and constantly forsake God. That, that, that is truly what God was saying, that the people of Israel are actually children who continue in disobedience, and that God is showing as vividly and, 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 and real as he could possibly do to Hosea, that this is what it's like. As you have a kid 
as you have children, that it is like the children are just constantly leaving me and constantly are, are uh, forsaking me. And so I'm going to cut off. As God, I'm going to cut you off. That this truly, as we look at Hosea and what it begins, is that this is a f- insight into a transition, into saying that this is not working anymore, that this is a, a new, God is going to do a new thing. So for some of you, it might be easy to say, wow, that God says some pretty harsh things to Israel. But if you're still wondering what the heart of it is, is that God loves his, uh, loves and his heart is broken for his children, that he provides for Israel, cares for Israel, and loves them as his children in the same way a mother and a father take care of their baby. A God, God truly cares for us, but imagine every time you have that child, that child never comes back or thinks about coming back or even wants to come back. An example that's probably more relevant for my wife on a much, much lesser scale is for dog owners. That every time you raised your dog and cared for your dog and loved your dog, it just ran away and it never wanted to come back. That eventually God gives Israel to what they want. But he doesn't stop there. And that's the good news. That that, that is what he's saying. That it's the Lord I will save them. And I will sow a new thing. And that you are not my people and I'm not your God, but the Israel will be as numerous as the sand on the seashore. How is he going to continue this if it's not through Israel? If it, how is he going to continue this promise? It's through Jews and Gentiles. It's through everyone who would believe. But, but it's not necessarily, it's not what we do. It's what God is doing. And so... How does he, so what does he show Hosea? He tells Hosea that something new and wonderful is coming. That that his children actually are showing a, a terrible image of that they are being cut off, but that he is doing something new. And that truly, that the one, uh, that the Lord their God will be, will save. And it's, and it's that how. It's actually by not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. That it's only by the spirit of God that we are truly able to stay and love God. So that is what makes us different. That is what our hope is, is that as children of God today, that the Christian life is fully surrendering to God to say, I can't follow you in my own strength or ability or effort. And that's what Israel was un able to see that they pursued the law but without faith they did it in trying to be good enough but the christian life is saying i can't do this i can't follow you god but jesus says that i am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through me so it's only jesus christ that is our one leader and our one king and so at the core of our life with god it is being saved that it's actually that we are recipients of being saved. That it's not in our own doing. It is, it is solely a gift of God. It is solely by God's grace that we receive this, uh, this, this, this gift of, of, of saving. And this is a total different, totally different me- message than Mormonism or any other religion that tries to tell you to be better or to be better, to do better. Mormonism basically teaches that once you are saved, then you can perfect your works in your own strength. No, this is what grace is, is that by grace, God loves me. By God's grace, he has saved me. And by God's grace, he holds me and actually transforms our hearts to love him. Israel was unable to do that. And it's not just love uh, once, but it's love that holds and love that continues to grow more and more. So Paul tells us, and if it's by grace, then it cannot be on the basis of works. If it were, grace would no longer become great, would be grace. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. That when we think about Hosea's marriage to Gomer and his three kids, God is demonstrating to Hosea how truly hurt and felt his heart is to a people who continue to reject him, to a people who continue to take for granted his love and care, He is telling them, no longer will I solely reach out to you, but I will reach my hands out to all who believe in me. 
that I am going to make a new covenant, and this covenant is not based on outward obedience, any blatant disobedience, or even right obedience, but out of wrong motivations like we might have seen Jehu. That it is only by giving us new hearts that God chose us, sacrificed himself for, for, for our sins, and he died for us, and it is by his Spirit that he brings us to believe in him and follow him. It's, a, it's at the very core of our heart, of our being, as Christians, we are a new creation because the Holy Spirit abides in us. And that is our hope. That is our, our trust to know that we are saved. That we, it was not something we did on our own. And Israel was un, incapable of con, con, being able to continue in this, in this relationship with God. But we, he has brought us near and has, by God, has saved us. And so the Holy Spirit lives in our hearts and keeps us in this wonderful relationship with our Heavenly Father who cares for us, loves us, and actually brings our hearts to truly love Him as our God. This is just uh, something that may prompt us to want to be more faithful, but it's not even that. It's what does this prompt us to do? It's a call to open our hearts to, to what He's already done. And it, is, and it is at work doing. And to know that we can come out of our own hiding, that we don't have to fear anything that we've done, anything that our hearts go to, but that our, at the core of us, God already knows where our hearts are. So any shame, any guilt can be shared with him. And for, that we are totally, fully forgiven and fully accepted in Christ Jesus by by God, and that his spirit actually brings us into saving um, relationship. That this is the good news, that it's not in our own work, but it is by a relationship that is wholly given to us by his spirit. Only by his spirit we don't worship golden calves. But only by his spirit we are able to worship God, and we truly love to. So let's respond to this gift of love and, and worship, our one faithful leader, our one true king, our redeeming groom, who is always going to love us, and we are always going to be able to love us as he brought, has brought us near by the working of his spirit. Thank you. Be All thanks be to Jesus Christ. So let us respond in song.